Yes, we're live. It's before seven. How do I know that? Because it's 156. <laughs> it's definitely early. I want to make sure I got a live feed in. I got a lot of stuff going on tonight, so I might not be able to make it. If I can, we'll do another one. If not, a little preemptive strike, not a problem. Today, I want to talk about two things. One is, and I want you guys, <laughs> I'm going to leave this up here. Um, and I'll, I'll ask it, a, you know, a number of times while people arrive here. But the AMR 500 supercharger, I got it all boxed up. I got my six rib pulley for it. I got that ordered and it, and it finally arrived. And I have the both inlets and outlets, the original composite ones that come with the supercharger. And that comes with a four rib pulley, but I bought a six. And then I have the Super Richie uh, steel versions of those. And my goal or the original idea after talking to the guys at Kenny Bell is to ship that blower assembly and all that stuff off to Sweden. They could put it on their blower dyno and then I could get super accurate <laughs> airflow and, and temperature and, and all of these all and boost pressure and all these all this wonderful data and then compare it to what I generated when I was on the engine dyno using the LS motor um, to to drive it and just to find out about airflow and pressure and all that stuff. Um, fun fact. I used an LS motor just to spin the blower so that we could monitor the airflow because we had an air turbine on it for that test. That's what Kenny Bell does. <laughs> they use an LS motor to spin the to spin the blower up at whatever speed that they want. And then they monitor all that and monitor the inlet temperature and the outlet temperature. You know, they can do all kinds of stuff. So they can monitor, they can run it at different boost levels, at different R RPMs, different combinations of those two things. Um, they can monitor temperature, they can mo monitor parasitic loss, and all of that stuff is is works out really, really well. So that's why I want to send it to compare it to what I had just to make sure that what I had is close <laughs> or accurate, super accurate or close or not even close. Whatever that is, I'm, I'm okay because more data is always better. But here's my question for you guys. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. I got everything packaged up. You know, it's a small box. The blower is tiny. So it's, it's little. It's like about this big, but this big, but this big. It's a square thing. Looks like the size box that a small turbo would come in. Not even a good size turbo, a small turbo. And so I took it down to UPS at my local UPS and said, hey, <laughs> by the way, how much will this cost to send to Sweden? He's like, oh, dude, <laughs> you probably don't even want to know. I'm like, well, I got to send it. So what, what is it going to be? It's like $497. <laughs> and I don't know why I just told you that because I was going to ask you what you guys thought. <laughs> but that's how much it is. Almost $500 to ship it to Sweden. And it was, that's outrageous. I, I told them what this, because they asked me how, what, what's the value of this thing? I said, oh, it's less than 50 bucks because we don't want, you don't want to pay tariffs and, you know, that sort of stuff. But I thought, wow, that's, that's like <laughs> more than three times what the thing just cost to buy. So I think um, we've backtracked a little bit. I think I think the backup plan is I'm just going to buy them one and, and they can just keep it there. That way we're not shipping it back and forth and they could just run it. And it's cheaper for me just to buy them another new one and hopefully they can get it there in Sweden. And rather than me trying to ship something, because imagine shipping it there. And then and then the guys from UPS said, well, and this is this isn't the total cost because you don't know what the tariff is or the taxes are. And also, if they don't pick it up, the uh, customs will send it back to you. <laughs> and guess what you get to pay for? You get to pay to ship it back. So not a good situation. So hopefully we can bypass all of that nonsense and I can keep that blower here, get them another one. and. Hopefully all of that will work out. We can get some data. I'm also looking into, uh, I've reached out to a contact of mine, the guys at Performance Designs, the guys that, that did the intake the, that I tested, the LS intake manifold. They also have one that's, you know, high Rammy looking kind of, that did very well in all the testing, super, you know, full of carbon fiber -y goodness. And um, I'd like to try to get a hold of them and Lingenfelter and Magnuson and because Magnuson, I think, has a blower dyno also. And I'd like to just it's a roots blower. So it's like right up their alley. Maybe get it done here in the States. Um, either way, just so we get some good. I don't you know, I just want some good, repeatable, accurate data to find out, you know, how much this thing can flow and support and everything. And in the meantime, um, probably by next month, I should have something to run that blower on some sort of motor that would not, not on the engine dyno, probably, probably, you know, real world, like on the chassis dyno where, and on the street. And then uh, the idea is to put it on something 
and run it and just see what it does. You go, okay, look, we put this blower on. It made, it, we spun it this fast. It made this much boost. It had this much temperature and it made this much power. That's all great. But then we got to do more stuff. We got to do an intercooler. We got to do E85. You know, we got to do all of that stuff. And the cool thing is if I pick one of the ones or two that I'm thinking about, um, I'll have to go old school on the tuning because we're not going to put a standalone management system on it. We're just going to we're just going to do it the old way, either an FMU or something, just to make it work. We're going to sensor manipulation, you know, whatever has to happen. We're gonna we're gonna do that and then make it work. And I, but I think it will work fine. We'll see. But the so that's the blower situation. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the video that I just put up, which is the air fuel distribution. Now I did one previously. And that was on the naturally aspirated combination. So we ran a single plane and a dual plane, uh, a carbureted deal on the LS motor. And then what, what we did was run it with a single O2 sensor in the collector the way that we normally do. And then also eight O2, so one in each cylinder. And we compared the readings to all of those. And so for you guys that are wondering, if you take the four on the side where we're getting the O2 sensor reading in and you average those, and because I went through this, if you average those, at any given RPM range, it comes out to what the average is. So that's that's pretty accurate. And then it would be plus or minus whatever the difference is between the sensors that you're using. So if you're using different sensors, we see readings that are different based on a sensor. In fact, the guys at West Tech did a big test long ago where they had like all kinds of different sensors, you know, in the same spot, essentially. And uh, just monitored the reading and see how see which ones were different. Um, honestly, I don't I don't really care that one reads uh, even as much as half an air fuel point different than the other, as long as you're, you know, using as a relative number. Um, but what I was doing on this one is we're comparing the 802s versus what we're reading. So we're reading a good average number, but that's because one of them might be 10 to 1 and one of them might be 13 to 1 neither one of which of those is good or nine to one and 13 to one, whatever your average number is. And then it comes out, Hey, look, it's running at 11 or 11 and a half to one. Yeah, that's all great. It's all perfect. Except it's not because one of them is not perfect. One of them is way rich, but that's safe. And one of them is not. So this video, that was the NA video. And this video did the same thing. We ran the two intake manifolds. We monitored the, them and tuned them essentially with one air fuel meter. And then we switched it back and forth from side to side just to make sure that the sides were the same. But we did that the way that we normally do it. Then we also had 802s on there, one in each cylinder, and see what the difference is and the range is for the different cylinders while we're saying, hey, this is actually okay. <laughs> this is staying in the 11s to low 12s. That's safe for our supercharged application. That's fine. But what is it really in all the cylinders? And we get a big disparity. And so we did that both for the, and this was a blow through deal with a Vortex supercharger blowing into a CSU carburetor into these two manifolds. And then I gave you the, the disparity of cylinder to cylinder balance, basically, or distribution, the big change in air fuel from one cylinder to another cylinder. We saw that it was, it was fairly dramatic enough there, enough where there would be a problem if you, if you ran it for, you know, an extended period of time that it would be lean enough that there, it might be problematic. So that was good. That's all good data, except that it, makes me not want to run things <laughs> anymore because if it's that far off in one cylinder you're like how, how do i know if i'm just reading four of them it's not it's not good enough and then the other one of the comments that i got and this is valid is that hey now that you've shown us that we're all scared and now we don't want to do this but how does the average guy that doesn't have access to 802s running on the dyno and collecting all the data, how do we do this? Well, there's one way to do it. And, and that is, this is the way that I recommend. I said, look, it's, it's still time consuming and expensive, but if you can weld O2 bungs in all the primaries and you're using one O2 sensor, let's say you're using a Holly or fast or whatever it is, and you're running on one O2 sensor, you can take that O2 sensor and move it into each one of the ports and make a pull. And, and then compare the data. Go, okay, this is the air fuel curve of cylinder eight and six and four and two and then one, three, five, seven. And go, hey, look, when this thing is showing me that on, on this bank, and then you could swap it over bank to bank, obviously, so that, so that you could get average readings for both sides. But then you could have, you'd have all the data. And it just takes you more runs and some welding. And then you just cap those when they're not in use. And then that way you could actually have 802 readings. It just takes more time and effort to make that work. 
But, <laughs> you know, some people don't want to go through that. But if you want the data and individual cylinder data, that's one way to do it short of having all of this 802 stuff. Um, because that is expensive and time consuming. And, and especially if you hurt O2 sensors, then they're, you know, expensive to replace if you use, you know, leaded race gas or something. And then, you know, that's all problematic. But it's, it's more data is always better. And this is kind of cool to run a blower and a blow through stuff and to see it work and make power because this thing made 820 or 830 or something like that. So it's doing, it was doing pretty well with the blower. So we'll see what you guys got going on on a Friday much cooler Wisconsin. It was, it was actually hot today. It was in the nineties today. Vegas is in the house. I'm sure this has been asked and answered a million times, but is there a difference between an 862 and a 706 style head? There's no performance difference between them. They're, they are different casting methods. And so one of them is supposed to be maybe not as structurally sound as the other. That being said, I've run the less sound, the less structurally sound heads, the 706s in ported form at 13 or 1400 horsepower and not had problems. And actually, you know, people worry about them cracking. And I've seen that between, uh, between the valves normally, and I still ran them and they were fine. <laughs> Twelve spark plugs from California to Europe, three hundred and fifty dollars for shipping. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Seventy-four bucks for shipping for the G10 MLS head gasket from overseas. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. It's bad when the shipping is three times the price of the thing that you have to send. K24 twin AMRs. Twin AMRs is not going to be enough for a K24. Are you, uh, when are you going to do your selected turbo? Are you talking about the sequential thing? Brisk 85 degrees in Alabama. I watched the video. How big a motor is that AMR good for? The inlets and outlets are really small. Don't use the sock inlets and outlets. Definitely use the build your own like I did, or they, there are other ones available out there that people make that you could buy. I just, it's easy to weld up your own deals or even 3D print them, which would be a cooler thing, but it's 150 horsepower blower. So really you need something that's from 50 horsepower to maybe 80 or 90 horsepower NA and then put the blower on it and then you can make more. Near Montgomery, uh, Alabama, right? Yeah. Richard, if you know someone involved with top fuel or funny car racing, check with them on locating a blower. At one time, I believe John Force just had one for their testing. I don't know that they were um, actually measuring the loss associated with driving the blower. A lot of them were running the blowers in to get the Teflon strips bedded. And then also making sure that they spun or were working properly. But the both Magnuson and Kenny Bell have actual blower dynos where, where we're monitoring and regulating and testing all of that stuff. But maybe the top deal guys do. I know, but but I know both of those guys do. But so between one of those two guys, it will make it work. Uh, Richard, you did an airflow, map, so a compressor map video. Yep. Is there a compressor map for the GT45? No, there's not, but there's probably something, and I haven't looked it up yet. There's probably something available from one of the, you know, good turbo companies <laughs> that have something similar to that, where we could get a fair, fair idea. I know from all of the testing that we've done, what it does and where it can do it and how much boost and how much NA power and all that. So I have a pretty good idea, but I don't know what the percentage numbers are. I'm guessing it's not very high. That's a pretty old design turbo. Is there a similar one that would be okay to us for a low revving big block? You need a quite a bit bigger supercharger for, for a big block. I don't know how much, you need to tell me how much power you're trying to make, but maybe on a, on a low dollar one, one of the M122s that they use on the 5.4, we know that those will go to 600 or more horsepower. 
So, and you can find those on eBay. Or you could always put a 671 on it. Because th those will work. They used to have, and I don't know if the, the blower shop still has some of the kind of smaller blowers, but not like the 174 stuff anymore. I did, th Those things must have just not been selling very well would be the only reason that you would eliminate them. We are doing live chat now. Oh, and I don't have a poll yet, right? Okay, so the poll is, would you spend $500 on shipping the AMR blower to Sweden to get real data? Let's start our poll. How much power can an M90 do? It depends on what M90 you're talking about. The ones that they use on the 3800 V6 Pontiac motors, like the Grand Prix and the Buicks and stuff, um, that one will not support as much power as other M90s that they have that they use on some of the V8s, like Magnuson has some and Roush has some. And they're, the rotor pack is similar, but the inlets and outlets are different, and so they flow more. So it depends on which one you're talking about. But we've made, I think you probably could make 500 with the, I'm thinking with the, 3800 V6 blower, the ones that you get from the wrecking yard. Why does it have to go there to get real data? It doesn't. It could also go to Magnuson. <laughs> For work stuff, I freight all over the world. $500 is insane. Yeah, that's just me going down to my local UPS. But, and I think that I, I was going to contact Brian and they have a, um, they have a big shipping account that they might be able to do better than that. I don't know if they ship internationally. Uh, why more on this thing? I, I was talking about shipping it to Sweden. Would you put a blower on a 91 GM 4.3 liter on a stock motor? Yeah, you could. It would be, it would definitely be beneficial or a turbo. I have, videos up on a 4.3 liter where we ran a torque storm supercharger which is good you could do it as a blow through carbureted deal um we also did a turbo you could also do that 3800 blower that i was talking about but you'd have to figure out a way to get it to work on the um on some sort of carbureted intake manifold or other, some other kind of intake manifold Try to find one on Amazon with free shipping. I think that if they just go online in Sweden and order it somewhere, it's they're they're gonna have it. I think you got us all looking at compressor maps. Yeah, that's what happens. And the same thing with this airfield deal. Now everyone's worried about their airfield. I saw that seven pounds is too low for the island, gets you into those lower lines close together. Yeah, but again. It, it's still going to work just because it's not in the 78% efficiency map, which like, like I said, very, very few people are running it there. Uh, Peter wants to know if there are good online tuning schools and somebody actually reached out to me from, I think from Australia about that exactly. And they wanted to um, help sponsor the channel or work with me on me promoting their stuff. And it, I went and took a look at it and it looks like it's pretty good stuff. And I asked previously um, if people had any experience with it and they, everybody seems to say positive things about it. 
possible to drop ship a new one for less? Well, that's what we're talking about doing. We're going to figure it out. Either they can order it from Sweden and he might be able to just get it from someplace in Sweden and it'd be cheap. Um, I wouldn't spend $500 to send it to Sweden, but I might pitch in. Yeah, I could get, if I got 500 people to each put in $100, but the thing is I wouldn't want to waste that money on, on sending it to Sweden because there's a better way. I know that there's a better way. Might work adapted to a V-twin Harley. Yeah, as long as the Harley was making in that power range, it would be fine. Evans Performance Academy is great. Okay. High Performance Academy is legit. But Evans is better for ECU tough stuff. Okay. Would you recommend to be a good head to run on an LS1 3 stroker on boost and pump gas? Trick floor AFR. Yes, either one of those are fine. My 243 seem to be not flowing enough. If you are running it on pump gas, how much boost are you running? How many, how much power are you trying to make? You can certainly run a 383 on a 243 head. And especially a ported 243 head would be good. <laughs> it was really 500 people to put in a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars each. That'd be a lot. It'd be a good little money-making scheme. Do you sell those t-shirts? Not they're these are not available for sale yet. I need to go make that happen. It, it reptile guy, it wouldn't surprise me if people did stuff like that, but that's that's not what I'm about. Uh, would you spend 500 on shipping to get the MR blower to get real data? 20% or saying yes, I'm surprised. I, I kind of would, I've done lots of stuff with the guys at Kenny Bell. I kind of would like to go do stuff with the guys from Magnuson. I'd like to see their facility because somebody had showed me pictures of it, uh, of the blower dinos and stuff. And I thought, oh, that's really cool stuff. I didn't know that they had that. When I had gone to Magnuson, the local one in California, they just had small electric motors that were they're using to spin the blowers to make sure that they're working and stuff, but not actual, not not actual blower dyno like control deal. Sounds like a great excuse to tour the facility, and they're they're over in um, Lingenfelter, which I would like to go do some stuff with those guys because they do lots of cool LS and LT stuff. So it would be good. And they do lots of dyno testing, which I like, obviously. Which I like. After looking at compressor wraps for three hours, <laughs> that's, that's indeed a rabbit hole. The other night after talking to you, Garrett17250 seems to be well suited to a modified G10. I'll have to get the part number and I'll be down there this weekend, I think. I'll get the part number for the turbo that I have that we ran when I did the um, compound deal. Yeah, I was lucky enough to spend time with John Lingenfelter and he was a, he was a great guy. I don't really know. I don't really know anybody else at the Lingenfelter facility that I know of. I might might have talked to somebody somewhere. I think I usually I try to talk to them if they're at the MPMC conference. But I remember getting a bunch of data from I thought it was from them on the L83 stuff or way early on because they they did a bunch of dyno testing with it. Cheaper for you to fly to Sweden and carry it. It probably is. Just check my baggage. That would be funny. I should see what a trip to Sweden costs. Huh? That's pretty bad if you can just have somebody carry it. And somebody mentioned um, 
pirate shipping or something? Just have a blower on the trade table. <laughs> yep. I wonder if they would let you carry that on. Do you think an M113K supercharger? Is that the one that was on the the Mercedes? I remember back in the day carrying a bunch of engine parts on. We had bags full of stuff because we were going to a world challenge race when I was doing stuff with the guys from Bear Racing. And we carried cylinder heads and intake manifolds and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Just carried them on. Just needed an adapter. An adapter what to put it for? So first of all, what what blower did that thing originally come on? And then you need a, a whole lower intake manifold. Have you tested the DNA GT45 Turbo on a K24? Yes, as luck would have it, I have. If you take a look at the video that I have up, I ran the K24 that I bought, I bought a JDM one, and we ran it with the guys at Skunk Racing with four different turbos. What would cause the dual plane intake crossover point to shift? I don't know what you mean by crossover point. Do you mean where it made more power or less power than the single plane? And are you looking at, what are you comparing? Are you comparing NA versus boosted or what things are you comparing? Can a TBI use as a blow through with more fuel pressure? I, well, yes, because the, like the four hole ones that people sell like snipers and, and fast had some, those can obviously be used as blow throughs. Are you asking about a factory TBI? And, and the, my question would not be that it's not going to work under boost. My question would be, do you have enough fuel flow? The AMR blower seemed rather loud in the video, not in a bad way. How, how loud did it seem in the test cell compared to other blowers that you run? It seemed very loud. In fact, the guys from the chassis dyno thought that there was something wrong with the dyno <laughs> when I started and I was revving it up. Um, it, it is pretty loud, uh, an E55 AMG. So what is, that, what is that motor rated at? The M113 uses a 122 supercharger. Is that a roots blower or does it use a twin screw? If it's a 122, I'm thinking that it's a roots. They let me carry cylinder heads on. Yeah, I've been through that. 469 horsepower. Yeah, so that if it, if it is a 122, that that like I said, we've we've made more than 600 anyway with those. I have to go back and look and see what the well, let's look and see what that GT500 made because we ran a we ran a few of those. Dyno results. Modular Ford. Modular Ford. No. And I kind of thought we would have more modular forward stuff. I don't have to look at that another time, but I, I think... I think on those that we've made, what have is is seven hundred with a with a five four one twenty two. Is that seem seem right? I see six hundred plus with bolt ons and pulleys on them. Yeah. Building battery a spot welder tonight. we listening for evoc batteries. Oh, cool. Are you spot welding like body panels or something? Q 
because that would be kind of cool. I'm excited about running the little supercharger on actually on something, actually on a car on the chassis dyno. Because whenever you put it on something, whether it's you're just now putting it on the engine dyno or something like that, you always have to go through some rigmarole. <laughs> you always have to make everything happy. It's a, the belt slipping or it doesn't have enough fuel or it has too much fuel or you have to figure out a way to play with timing or what, you know, the, the discharge hose keeps coming off or the inlet hose or whatever. It's, it's always something. And then after you get all of those things, all the clamps tight and all, all the fuel pressure regulators working and stuff, then it's like, Oh look, yeah, it just, just does its thing every time, every time. That's where you want to get it to. You want to get it to where like, Hey, look, it just repeats and it's making boosts and doing all the happy things. Now, when we do that, now, once we get to that point, now we can start making changes. Now we can go, hey, look what happens if we put the chili bomb intercooler in there. Can we go to just using math? Can we calculate how much bigger of an injector, like a single injector maybe in, in some of these cases, uh, or multiple injectors, how, how much bigger do we have to go to put E85 in and just make it work so that we don't have to do any tuning? Because honestly, we it doesn't have to be exact. We can get it pretty close. I still think the blower needs to be put on a smart car. I did see a smart car for sale. It's an original TBI with a return block, stronger fuel pump, and external fuel pressure regulator. So if it's an original TBI, that's like, if I remember right, 9 to 15 pounds is what they are. Will it? Will they take more than that? Uh, what type of trend you upgrade? I haven't done enough testing between the different types to know which one ultimately is going to be better. Um, my concern really is more that you have, you know, like in my case, I have a the motor in my truck, 330,000 miles, and you get something like that from the wrecking yard. A trending upgrade is not a bad idea just as a matter of like <laughs> precaution or maintenance, not because you want the thing is going to be better with an upgrade, but because it has 320,000 miles on it, it's not going to last forever. It's not going to go 8 million miles. It's going to be something less than that. And did you already get to the point at 300,000 miles or 400,000 miles, whatever the number is, um, how many cycles does it have left in it? So if you're upgrading that, I just look at that more as, Hey, I'm upgrading it. And now it's going to be newish and hopefully would last as long as it did with the factory stuff. I saw that Calvin's building a North star. I don't know. I have, I need to call him and ask him, ask him what he's doing. I wonder if Mark's, North Star will still even just turn over. It's been sitting outside a long time, but I think it's all sealed up. So we're at 81% no and 19. I think I'm more on the no side. I think we could just buy one and, and get it to them. Just ship it to them. Not buy one here and ship it because that's going to be the same problem, but they should be able to buy one there. That AMR blower should be available. Essentially, there should be people, you know, reselling these things everywhere in the world, I think. Because I think I talked to somebody from France that had one and I think he bought it there. So I, I think it should be available in a lot of different places. And I think the, it's too bad it's too small for the Pontiac Trophy four cylinder. One thing they won't have is your flow modifications. Yeah, but I can show them what I did.
because again, I, I would ship the things over that I have, but it's um <laughs> those would only be a couple hundred dollars for you know pieces of steel. And I don't even know how much less like 3D printing them would be like how much less it would be to ship them because they would be a little bit lighter, but they're not very heavy anyways. I have a 2002 E550 Mercedes 4.7 twin turbo, only rate of 404 horsepower, 443 foot pounds. Car is impressive for a heavy car. 12, 12, eight. What mile an hour did it run? D16 and an AMR. I was actually looking at, because I'm looking at a price range, so all kinds of things come up, but some of the Hondas come up. Horsepower and torque crossover. The horsepower and torque crossover can't be shifted. The horsepower and torque have to cross over at 52.52. So you might be reading different, um, different lines. They, it has to because of math. So you can't, you can't shift that. He said in the video that the head design is the same as the 4200 in, in what, in that it's a four valve head and the rod is the same, but it has a bigger bore and a shorter stroke. I like the idea of bringing in Magson, if you could film the whole thing. I know I would like that. I would like to take a trip there and do that. Brandon, thanks for watching. Why why do you don't put it on the th sprint, sprint three cylinder? I haven't figured out a way to hook that motor up and run it on the dyno, but that motor's not in a car. It's just sitting in my shop or my shop in my storage. Uh, we've pretty much seen what it can do. We haven't seen what it can do. We haven't seen at all what it can do. At least I haven't. 12, 8, 112. That's good. E-bike battery packs can do body panels. Oh, cool. An old CRX would be good. I, I kind of wanted a carbureted Metro motor would be good too. A carburetor, a carburetor version would solve a lot of problems because then we could just run the carburetor above the blower and to really just, well, it would, It'd be nice to attach the blower right to the throttle inlet or to the to, to the intake manifold inlet, but it's just not going to position the blower pulley right. <laughs> uh oh, you just change your idle feed restrictor so that now you're the carb whisperer. An 84 Prelude? Probably not very much. Well, let's go to our magic box. Nineteen eighty four Prelude Specs. 123 horsepower. That's more than I thought. It was a 1.8 liter. Big Prelude power. Prelude's always got the big blocks. The H-series stuff. Richard, do you have some applications you're thinking of bolting a blower to? Yeah, a, a Metro, the 2.2 liter carbureted Dodge motor. I was looking at a smart car, the Honda stuff. Anything that's sub 100 horsepower NA. Any of those would work. Ideally, and the other reason I would like something carbureted is because then I can just turn the distributor and take timing out. A Chevy Chevette would be good, although I, I bet it's hard to find those, right? Here. 
$700 Chevy Corvette, a 78 Chevy Chevette, $700 commuter. I'm sure that that's a long time ago. I hate that they show listings. Ah, yeah, this listing's from 2004. Yeah, it says Chevy Chevette, except you're showing a Corvette. That's not the same thing. Chevy Chevette market. One of them says $28,000. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry that that's, that's a lot. The average sale price has doubled, uh, let's see, from April to now. For sale, 10,000, 21, 16,000, 8,400, 5,800. Wow. Uh, no, hard pass on that. I need a Chevy Chevette for sale Craigslist. Smart guy. Columbus, Ohio. Here we go. These are going to be the cheap ones because they're going to be all rusted out. Great. All it is is ads for We Buy Cars. Piece of junk. 78 barn find. No thanks. There's two strikes against it. One, it's a Chevette, and two, it doesn't run. Man, this thing is like in mint condition too. Oh, except for the the window got smashed. That's probably a smash and grab. It's not good. Not good. Let's see. Uh, or the other one is the. The um, Iron Duke would be another possibility. Richard, have you done a supercharger engine dyno test drawing through a car intake tube with the intake box and all versus a big open cone filter? Not, I don't think with a supercharger. I've, we've done, we've done factory air boxes and stuff on NA motors, but I don't ever remember doing it on something that was supercharged. Shifter cart. I dyno tested my 125 shifter cart. It made three uh, on a chassis dyno on a dyno jet, and it made 33 horsepower at the tire. Single plane intake appears to stay the same while the dual plane shifted. It the the crossover point between um, for horsepower and torque can't be different. It has to be 52-52. An Iron Duke is a is a good example. Yep. Could you do a small turbo with an AMR? Yeah, you could. You could do a compound deal. That's what I want to do on the Sprint turbo motor.
I'm really surprised the poll isn't going the other way. He doesn't want to really know data. The you're making it sound like the choice is between having data and not having data. That's not what the poll is. <laughs> the, the poll is the $500. <laughs> Do they want it? They, everybody wants the data. They just don't want to spend the 500 on it. You get an S10. I was actually looking. I S10s were one of the things I was looking at. So an article about an Iron Duke with an SB2 head on it. Is Does it share the bore spacing with a small block Chevy? It's 1980 Chevy in North Hollywood for a thousand on Craigslist. That's close enough. Nathan, okay, so you, you, yeah, okay, I got 84 prelude with AMR draw through with a GR45 blowing through it. Yeah, you could run a turbo in a blower. You, you, the blower would be the first thing they would provide boost to the motor. And then that exhaust energy would be used to spool the turbo and the turbo will feed the blower. A Nissan hard body truck or a Toyota 22R might be one also. <laughs> I want you to spend the five bills on it. Yeah, that, that makes it a lot easier, right? Then it's a no-brainer. Should Richard spend the money? Oh, yeah, definitely, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. freaking lutely A GT45. It's a little oversized for an AMR500. I didn't know that the Iron Duke had a small block Chevy bore spacing on it. Do you have a target air fuel or just based on dyno results when tuning? Well, yes and no. You you when you're running supercharged stuff, it might make more power when it's leaner, but it will also blow itself up eventually. So you don't want to do that. So we try to target a safe air fuel. So let's say for if it's a boosted thing, 11.5 seems to be pretty safe for most things. If I'm running at Bonneville, I, it'll be less than 11.5 because you're running sustained. And if it were in a boat and I was running for minutes on end at wide open throttle going across some body of water, it would definitely be in the low 11s. 33 wheel horsepower. That's pretty good. It must not be stock. It was. It was a, um, what was it? It was a 125 shifter cart and it was an SSC, I think. I want some of the shirts he wears. I, I need to make some. I just haven't done it. 77% <laughs> are saying no. heard you can fairly easily modify a small block Chevy head to fit an Iron Duke. That would be a really good thing. Because I'm really <laughs> wanting to do the 300 Ford with the LS head on it. Would it be a terrible idea to attach the blower to an engine that doesn't make a power but revs high? As long as you pulley the blower accordingly, it, it, it will work. Um, what 12,000 RPM bike motor only makes 70 horsepower, though? Is that a... That wouldn't even be a... Would it be a small one? Would it be like a 70 horsepower? What's that going to be, like a 250 or something? Oh, I have no idea. I don't know anything about bikes. What was I watching that the guy put a... Um, thought he put a bike oh he put a um a uh like a one liter 
street bike engine in that made 170 horsepower and put it on a motocross chassis and was out riding it, <laughs> which is, that's nuts. How much power could you make on a Windsor with two GT45s? Well, the two GT45s will support 1,500, maybe 1,600 horsepower, so that much. An 882 Ducati probably already makes too much power for the AMR 500, right? I mean, that's got to make 100 horsepower or more. You see a company builds Iron Dukes with LS heads. I haven't seen that. I saw the one that Blueprint was they just posted a thing on it. They had some kind of industrial motor. It kind of looked like a, an iron Duke with the LS head on it. It was an industrial motor that they actually used, but they, I don't think they ever ran it with the LS head on it. I stay away from bikes. The The technology on bikes is amazing. And the RPM and the power and all that stuff is, is, is amazing. And and I do like watching like Grand Prix racing and stuff. It's nuts what those guys do. I mean, they're drifting bikes and hopping them and <laughs> all kinds of crazy stuff. It's not, that's not for me. I've ridden lots and lots of bikes, but that level is not, that's beyond me. Saw a video with a nice cone filter versus no filter, and he gained 30 wheel horsepower. 30 wheel horsepower is a lot, but maybe not on a boosted thing. Obviously, the boost went up. If you have a radius entry feeding the, the, the blower or turbo, you can pick up a lot of power. We've picked up 30 or 40 horsepower a lot from having a radius entry. So if, you're, if your air filter is not restrictive and it has that radius entry, then you can pick up a lot of power versus not having one or especially having a factory box on it. Because if you think about a factory box on an NA motor, okay, it was designed for, and, and, and is already probably slightly restrictive. Let's say you have a 400 horsepower LS motor. We know that a factory box is somewhat restrictive even there, because if you put a, you know, a decent air intake on it, sometimes you could pick up power. Now, what happens if you doubled that? It's 800 horsepower now. That air box is not designed to flow that level. And so it's certainly going to be restrictive. Hey, guys. It was at SEMA. Uh, yeah, are you, if you're talking about the Blueprint one, that, that's something that they haven't ever run. GPC 600 only had, oh, only had 75 horsepower? Okay. I had a 600 Ninja. And a 500 Interceptor and a 750 GSXR. The GSXR fell fast. Uh, adventures for a low horsepower motor, motor swap the AMR on a Yugo rated at 55 horsepower. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that we're looking at. The Geo Metro is rated at a similar power level. I've been 529, 129 on 275. I'll have to put those on and see if I can make a stock crank take it turn down to 210. It's a very good chamfer on it. Do you sell the engine? What what engine combos are you talking about? My buddy just sold a C6 Z06. He was making 1,050 at the tire. That's nice. Does it DeLorean make too much power for an AMR 500? Yeah, it's that's got to be more than 550 horsepower, right? I would hope that it is. If not, it definitely needs to have a engine swap done. I see lots of them on the air cooled VW stuff, and that's pretty cool because they're they're using them with draw through side drafts and down draft carburetors. Uh, 
Uh, Eric, I don't know if I'll be on tonight or not. That's why I came here now. Uh, depends on how tonight goes. The DeLorean motors, 130 horsepower. Yeah, that's not very much. I hello. I still think that the that little blower is probably a little small for that. We also debated putting a tiny blower on a Honda Beat, 63 horsepower. Yeah. Those are cool, though. First gen XBs have 103. Yep. I'm trying to think, what was my what was my Yaris? Was that a sub-100? 2007... Yaris specs. 106 horsepower. Okay. My favorite swap I've seen is LS4 swap and a DeLorean. I've seen LS swaps and DeLoreans. I think that's an excellent choice. That's a good one. I think it's a cool enough looking car, especially if you see one that's really clean. And then it would be cool if it was also, you know, ready to rock. So we're going to close out our poll at 73% and 27%. But we are going to look for a different, <laughs> a different, a workaround for, for the $500 shipping charge. Like Calvin's LS4 swap DSM. The AMR was originally a small blower uh, by Ison is the name of the company. I think. Um, I think it. I think it was on Nissan's. Does it make gains on a V8? No, it's a blower that you want to use on a 150 horsepower motor. So if you had a V8 that was making less than 150 horsepower, I don't know how where you would find that, but then you you know you could do that but it's really designed for a small motor an na motor that makes less than 100 horsepower somewhere between 50 and 100 horsepower or so, or thereabouts and then you put the blower on it and then it, it, it can support that power level yeah same company Hasten is Toyota. Could what what act as EcoBoost for gas mileage? A supercharger is not going to improve fuel mileage. One more minute. So your restrictor change didn't work. If you want to do an air-cooled VW for it, I don't have a I don't have a car to put that in, and I also don't have a way to hook that up on our engine dyno. It's time to go. <laughs> uh, if I'm not back tonight, you guys all have a good Friday night. And I should be doing some work and getting some new videos done later today, if not certainly tomorrow. Uh, four cylinder Fox body. Again, anything that's under 100 horsepower, um, it will work on. And on that note, I will see you guys all, if not tonight, tomorrow. Bam, 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 bam,